Hey guys, it's LP from Techno Buffalo, and welcome back for a very exciting advanced overview of Windows 7. In the first video, we looked at the aesthetic improvements and some of the more prominent features of the OS. In fact, I got a couple of pretty good emails in response for that video, and one of the emails went like this. You spent two and a half minutes on wallpapers and themes. Are you gay? Well, <laughs> I'm not gay, but you're in luck. I won't be spending time looking at themes in these videos. So in the upcoming Windows 7 videos, we're going to be going deeper into the new features and improvements. Windows 7, in my opinion, is all about efficiency, faster access to different tasks, and more efficient ways of completing those tasks. And speaking of faster access, let's start off with some more keyboard shortcuts. Shortcuts, in my opinion, are always good, but don't take too many shortcuts in life because you might miss out on something. Anyway, when you're in a folder, you can press Alt-P to bring up a preview view of the files, or in this case, pictures, what you're looking at. Pretty exciting stuff. When you hold down Windows and the spacebar, you enable the arrow peak function, which gives you a view under the screens you have open on the desktop. Last time I showed you the arrow snap feature, which attaches your windows to the edges of the screen. To speed things up, you don't have to use your mouse to do this. You can just easily press down the Windows key and hit the arrow keys in the direction of your choice. Pressing the Windows key and the up arrow will maximize the folder, and pressing Windows down will minimize. Also, a very functional key command has been added for zooming in. Just hit the Windows and Plus key to get in nice and close. Not a bad feature when, for example, reading small fonts and other stuff that's under the limit of your vision. When you're zoomed in, the mouse will follow your actions. Pressing down the Windows key and the minus key will get you back out. Okay, next up is the rehashed Windows Media Center. I'm just going to take a brief look at Windows Media Center because there's so many features that would take an entire video to cover. Windows Media Center on Vista was a bit clunky and a bit slow at times, but the Media Center has been tweaked for Windows 7. It's faster, it looks sleeker, and best of all, it seems to work. I had some serious blue screen of death issues with my DVB tuner on Windows Vista, which was not cool at all. The Media Center interface seems to be quite fast and definitely easy to use. It's very simple to set up your music and video libraries, but the single coolest thing about the new Media Center is that how easy it is to set up with an extender device such as my trusty Xbox 360. All you need to do is have your Xbox 360 hooked up to the same router, and from your My Xbox menu, launch the Media Center, and you will be prompted with an 8-digit code. Enter the code on your PC and press Next. And that's about it. Now you have your Xbox 360 attached to your PC, and you can stream any media content to your home theater. On your Xbox, you will be getting the exact same Media Center interface, which is also very cool. And you don't have to have Media Center running on your PC to do this. Just make sure the Windows 7 is up and running, and you can access Media Center on your Xbox at any time. And after having streamed a couple of movies to my Xbox 360, I can say that it seems to work great. There's not much reason to fill up your Xbox hard drive with music and videos because streaming is now so painless. I can definitely recommend using Media Center on the Xbox. Also, let's take a quick look at the new Media Player 12 in Windows 7. As you can see, there is now a streaming option on the toolbar itself. And streaming is now possible over the local network but also over the internet. And the setup procedure is equally as simple as the setup process we looked at on the Media Center. The setup requires you to associate with a Windows Live ID, which then enables you to, for example, set up an online media library at home and access your files, for example, music and videos at work. Some pretty cool stuff. But I still feel that the media player still lacks a bit in usability, for example, compared to iTunes. <laughs> Home Group is also a new addition to Windows 7. It's basically a simplified way of setting up your home network. 
I've personally never had issues with sharing my files between my home computers, but if you found it too tricky in the past, Home Group dumbs the process down to a few simple tasks. Just choose the files and or devices you want to share and create the Home Group. The setup wizard will give you a password and that's about it. You've created the Home Group. Now the Home Group you've created will appear on devices connected to your network. So you can just use the password you were given and connect to the Home Group. As you probably noticed, the Home Group is now listed as an icon in the My Computer window. Sharing your files in your home network is now so easy that if you manage to fail setting up a home group, I'll personally come down and give you a good slap in the face. Okay, let's take a look at some of the new features in the control panel. New to Windows 7 is the Action Center. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, this time around, I'm not talking about the Chuck Norris type of action, but basically the type of action that you don't want to see. The Action Center on the taskbar will pop up as a flag if there's a severe issue that needs your attention. For example, issues relating to lack of virus protection or having not backed up your system, which it seems I've yet not done. But in any case, the Action Center is basically a one-stop place where you can find system maintenance information and where you can try to address and troubleshoot issues and problems that Windows has detected. Also a very cool new feature in the security setting is the BitLocker. BitLocker is a very easy to use security software that makes it possible for you to encrypt any of your content, for example, external hard drives or USB drives so that they're only accessible using a password. So if you're like me and you do some moonlighting for secret government agencies, it's probably a good idea to encrypt your files. Just select a drive to be encrypted and enter a desired access code. And you may want to save the recovery key somewhere just in case you lose your password so you don't have to recruit the friendly neighborhood hacker to recover your files. The encryption takes a few minutes depending on the device you're encrypting. And there we go, encryption complete. So when I take out the USB drive and put it back in, I'm prompted with a window asking for my password. I think BitLocker is a very cool security feature to have, just in case. Another smart addition to Windows 7 is the improved Windows Search, which is starting to remind me of a certain Mac OS X feature called Finder. Searching index files is super fast, and the control panel has been now added to the indexing, which is very convenient for fast access to your device and hardware settings. The next feature is something pretty cool, and it's called XP Mode. And it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's basically a virtual machine that runs Windows XP like any other application on top of Windows 7. It was very easy to set up and here it is running in a window, but you can also run it in full screen if you want. It has all the old applications and most of the functionality that Windows XP had, but XP mode is mainly meant for backwards compatibility for older programs and devices that just aren't compatible with Windows 7. And while we're here, let's take a quick comparison of the word pads and check out how it's been redefined for Windows 7. So on the right, we have the old word pad from Windows XP and Windows Vista. And on the left, we have the new redefined Windows word pad with the new ribbon interface. Microsoft is really trying to push the new ribbon interface, something already seen in Office 207. The ribbon interface is basically meant to replace all these old looking drop down toolbars with an okay looking tab based approach. I'm not sure if I liked how it was integrated into Office 207. In my books, functionality always comes first, aesthetics come second, and I'm not sure if the ribbon interface improved functionality in Office 207, but I have to admit, it looks pretty smart here on WordPad and also on Paint, so it could be that it only takes a bit time to get used to. But in any case, XP mode is a great feature for backwards compatibility, and it also kind of works like a time machine. You can always turn the XP mode on and imagine that you're back in 2003. Ah, uh, good times. So we're about to wrap up this video, but I should mention that there are a lot of smaller improvements and new features to Windows 7. For example, the resource monitor has now been upgraded with a new graphical display of memory usage. Also new to Windows 7 is the possibility of installing virtual drives and a great addition to the Windows Explorer burning software is that it's now possible to burn ISO images onto disk using only the Windows Explorer burning software, which is very cool indeed. Last but not least, to the not so cool stuff, 
Here are the prices for Windows 7 Home, Professional, and Ultimate. Well, look on the bright side. It is cheaper than Windows Vista when it came out, but it's definitely going to tear a hole in your wallet the size of a decent 50 caliber gun blast. And after just paying only 30 bucks for a Mac OS X10 upgrade, paying 200 bucks for an upgrade to get Windows 7, which I've been already using on the beta for eight months, feels like a punch in the face. So, what do you think? Are the new features worth an upgrade to Windows 7, or are you going to be sticking with XP or Windows Vista? Post your thoughts in the comments. And check out my next video where I put Windows Vista, XP, and 7 through some demanding tests and benchmarks. Catch you later, LP from Techno Buffalo, signing out.